do great things for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There's a lot of potential in the teenage years. Listen to what John says in 1 John 2.14. I have written unto you fathers, this is specifically to fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. If the word of God will abide in you, teenagers here, you will overcome the wicked one. Remember, the wicked one is here to destroy, absolutely destroy you, because he knows if he can destroy the teenager, that's a great way to destroy the family and those around. Did you catch that? We have written unto the fathers. I have written unto you, fathers. I think you caught it. He wrote to the young men, you are strong. Helen Keller once said, I am only one, but I am still one. I cannot do everything, but I can still do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do the something that I can do. I will not refuse the something that I can do. Teenagers, it only takes one. You don't need a whole team. It's just you. Focus on yourself. Not of everyone what they're doing. Are they having fun? Living a life that's just all about fun. That fun is going to go away soon and you're going to have your life. Teenage years, as I've read these great people, what they've accomplished in the world, you can accomplish great things for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Teenagers, you may not be able to give as adults do. You may not be able to teach and preach in certain venues. But I challenge you tonight, put your hand to the plow. If you just got your license, bring people to church. But there are many things you can do. I am blessed to see and my heart rejoices the teenagers in the choir here at Agape. You have leadership that's grooming the next generation. Teenagers, it's a great time if you can just volunteer and have a prayer, time for prayer. Prayer is very powerful. There's many things in my life. The greatest prayer I ever prayed was January 16th, 2013. That was saying, Lord Jesus Christ, forgive my sin and save me. That's the only way to heaven. The world is going to influence you with a lot of things to detract you from the goal. The goal is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good to see teenagers getting involved in the work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's so good to see the two teenagers here playing to the Lord. They're not outside in a club tonight. They're not fighting with their parents, why should I be here? But they're serving with their talents, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there's a reward for you. The potential for the teenage years, the faith they have to believe in God. There's potential for great faith in teenagers. Teenagers can trust oftentimes much more readily than adults. They haven't lived long enough to figure out what can't be done. They still believe God can do great and mighty things. They have that pure heart. I have a nephew, and I tell him he, on the car, jump to my hands. He jumps. He has childlike faith. Teenagers, if you continue in your childlike faith, the world is going to try to destroy that. Even adults, continue in your childlike faith. If you are a Christian for many years and you once had that childlike faith, where is your faith today? Do you need to get it right with God? Tonight, you can do that. This is not only a birthday party, but this is the family's desire and want. Why to have the Word of God here? For hearts to get right. For hearts to initially accept our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In a gathering this large, probably there is someone who doesn't know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You can get that right today. I pray that no one leave this room without knowing 100% for sure that Jesus Christ is their Savior. And the only way to do that is to confess your sin. Pastor, uh, had, his whole prayer was a sermon. And we're sinners. Because we sinned, Jesus Christ died on the cross. And because we sinned, we need a savior. There's no more blood sacrifice. In the old days, there used to be blood of sheep, goats, and bulls. We don't have that because Jesus Christ, he died on the cross for you and me. He did this for you. He said, Emmanuel, Suresh, Peter, Alex, Diana, 
I'm going to die on the cross and shed my blood for you. Teenagers recognize but teenagers can fall. But one of the great teenagers that I'd like to discuss in the Bible is David. David developed a great faith in his latter childhood, early youth, teenage years. A wonderful example of a teenager that God hold, that God can really use his life. Let's look in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 18. First, Chan, first Samuel 16, 18 says, Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Now Jesse's father knew he could do great things for the Lord, as we just read. That is cunning and playing and a mighty valiant man. And a man of war and prudent in manners. And comely person and the Lord is with him. Diana, if you're going to purpose in your heart to obey the Lord, the Lord will be with you. And no promise that this world can give her or any of us or any teenager here can beat the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ being with you. This was something said about a teenager. David was just taking his violin lessons and doing chores like and having a good attitude and obeying his parents. When you have a good attitude and obey your parents, the Lord can call you. Now, if he was being rebellious, I don't think the Lord would have called him. What he didn't know is God was going to use this teenager with a good attitude. You can tell when the Lord is upon and in a child. There's something distinct in their walk and talk and character when the Lord Jesus Christ is in a teenager and a child. 1 Samuel 17.37 says, David, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion... David, as a teenager, is remembering his youth, how the Lord delivered him even in his youth. We all have had storms in our life. If you haven't had a storm, you're about two years old. Even as a teenager, you've had storms in your life. And remember those times when the Lord Jesus Christ has delivered you. God has delivered you out of those storms. Everyone is going through a storm, is going through a storm, or is just coming out of a storm in this room. Remember, God has you, but you need to put your faith in Him. Don't put your faith in anything else. The devil is going to want you to put your faith in a, uh, someone else, something else except Jesus. Only put your faith, let him see you through that storm. Becoming a Christian is not going to tell you that, hey, you're protected from all the storms. But Jesus Christ will hold your hand through those storms. 37 again, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the...